Good afternoon. Um, well, it is for me anyway. Um, don't know when you're watching this, but uh, have a good day if it's not your afternoon. And this is one of those scenarios where when you build a model, you often end up with holes that, you know, where edges come together and you end up with something that's not four-sided and there's no clear answer as to how to resolve this. The, um, so we're going to go through the steps to um, fill this. Uh, but before we get started, um, I just want to kind of share how I set up my models. And I try to build everything to theoretical edges and then blend out those theoretical edges. And so these blue surfaces here, those are the surfaces that I've created to set up my volumes. And those are really clean um, surfaces. You can see very few control points. And I try to keep those as clean as possible so that when I start trimming them that back, I have the best chance possible to get good, good tangency on the edges. Once I built my primary surfaces, I trim back the theoretical edges and I start blending out all the shapes. And when I blend out the shapes, that's what I consider the uh, secondary surfaces. And I've turned them yellow here, uh, just so you see, can see. I basically used fillet surface or fillet edge uh, to create a surface here and then use the edges to trim back the uh, original surfaces. If I untrim them, you can see very quickly that it's a four-sided surface. Um, all NURB surfaces are four-sided. Um, we can turn them into any shape we want by trimming them, uh, you know, but in general for your surfaces that define your shape, you want to have uh, four-sided surfaces and as cleanly as possible. So, you know, we built this and we ended up here and then Rhino actually has a tool that's called the patch, which in some cases uh, delivers very acceptable results, but not always. Um, the downside of the patch is that, yes, you can fill a five-sided hole, but you have no control over the flow of the control points or the isoparms. Um, and so, you know, the result may not be what you want. Now, if I turn on Zebra for, for this model um, really quickly, then you'll see that we have you know, a really clean surface here, really clean blend surface that go, goes in this direction, and then it kind of splits off in this Y shape. And ideally, we would have these uh, zebra lines flow through this intersection, branching off to one side, and then once we hit the center, we want to branch off to the other side. And so if we, uh, if we put a patch in here, we can select the edges, I'm going to use the curve. I'm going to toss this out anyway. Um, and if we preview that, this is what we get. And here you can see that the isoparms uh, are not following uh, the the curvature here. Um, and but it puts it actually uh, creates a pretty decent result. So this is my final, you know, what I call tertiary surface. And if I turn on zebra stripes on these guys, you'll see that. It's not bad, but there's some wobbling here and there, and that's just because we don't have control over how these isoparametric curves go through um, the model. Now, with that said, if this is a highly aesthetic area, you probably want to do something that's better, but if this is just an area that is, you know, in a small corner where you're just trying to close something up and get it ready for production, this may produce an acceptable result. The the advantage of this is that this is very fast um, and you can get a good result very quickly. But what if we wanted to have better control over how this would flow? Well, if you want better control, you want to try and divide up the anything you try to fill into four-sided patches. And so here, the obvious one, in my opinion, in this particular case, uh, is to have this edge flow into this edge and this edge flow into that edge where they meet in the center. And the other thing that I also wanted to display is that the uh, these are trimmed surfaces and trimmed surfaces can have unnecessarily complex edges. And the more complex an edge is, the more difficult it's going to be to get good curvature and surface continuity through it. So if we quickly duplicate an edge here, and we turn on the control points, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six control points on this edge. And this is a pretty simple surface, um, but I've trimmed it. Now, they, there is a, a command that's called the rebuild edges command. Uh, 
and there it is. And so if I rebuild the edges of this surface and I duplicate that edge again and turn on the control points, you'll see that it did a much better job of um, uh, reducing the control points. I only have three control points right now, so I have a really good chance to get uh, good matching through this area. And so if we're going to repeat that command for all these guys, we just set ourselves up for the best possible solution. So now I have prepared my um, my edges and the next step that I want to do is I want to flow from here to here so I have an edge here this is one edge here's my second edge and here's my third edge well here because these are symmetrical I kind of want to meet in the middle here so I'm going to extract an ISO curve uh, turn on my curves for a second set current then extract ISO curve for that surface and I want that to be in the center so that's my curve there and here I don't have an obvious do I want to follow this edge and go in this direction or do I want to follow this edge and go in this direction or other solution do I split the difference um, in, in this case I believe that splitting the difference provides the best solution and so we go in um, between curves we have a start curve this edge and this edge and then we accept that result and so now we get a a line or a curve change that to my curve layer now we get a curve that is uh, on this surface it may not always be on that surface depending on the uh, geometry this is a flat surface so it should be on the surface if it's not on the surface uh, you can use the pull command and pull it uh, against the surface and I'm gonna delete my input yes and so now I know that this edge and you know this might be a really complex curve but in this case it doesn't matter it's not but in this case it also doesn't matter because um, this it, these are just helper curves that I am going to delete anyway and so now we can create a blend curve between these two guys so blend curve and we're gonna go from here to here and so now I have a blend curve and so now you see that I've split up this edge into uh, a, you know into good patches that we can create we have two four-sided patches that we can uh, fill and so the the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to split these edges out um, because I'll need those edges for my surfaces so split edge and we're going to split this edge and we're going to go from there to there I might have already done that so now I am set up for success. So I'm going to set up my tertiary surfaces and I'm going to do a sweep to command. And my first rail is this guy. Oh, that one's not split. Split edge first. Split that edge over there. And now we can do sweep two from there to there. And then my cross section curves are this guy, surface edge, and that guy. And I want to be tangent to these guys. So I'm going to change that. And I'm going to make those tangent. And then if I turn the zebra stripes on, you'll see that I have good flow. And the reason I have good flow uh, is if I turn on the control points, you'll see that my control points are fairly well distributed. Now we can improve on this, but let's go ahead and keep going. So we're going to make, build another one in the other edge. We're going from there to there and from there, surface edge to there. I'm going to use the curve for now and we want to be tangent to those as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rebuild these surfaces and I'm going to make them, I'm going to raise the degree on them so I have more information on in there. And that is going to redistribute the control points so that I get more even distribution. So I'm going to rebuild this and I'm going to make them both degree five with six control points instead of degree three. And I'm going to accept that the deviation is very small. And I'm going to rebuild that one as well. Same thing. And then I'm going to isolate those for a bit and turn on the control points. And so now you can see that I have very well evenly distributed control points and now I just need to match these guys. Uh, because they're the same degree with the same number of control points, the matching should be fairly simple. 
So we're going to use match surface. That guy. And we're going to go that edge and that edge. And you see that it's deforming this a lot. And what I want to do is I want to preserve my isocurve uh, direction because I want these control point layout that I had, I want those to match. We want tangency, we want the other end to be positioned, that's this end and this end, and we're going to average these curves uh, or these surfaces so that they're splitting the difference, um, match by closest points, and I think that it's a good result. And so now these are matched. If we turn that on, zebra, you'll see that I have really nice flow through here. And then if I show my objects, um, we have we may have moved some edges as a result of this. Um, I actually don't know if I did, but we'll find out. So select the curves, hide those for a second, and now I'm gonna join all of this together. Join, and then in analyze we can do naked show naked edges. And we actually the, even though the edges may have moved a little bit, they didn't move far enough to be outside of the file tolerance of this particular file, and so we still have good. Uh, uh, matching no naked edges. So I'm going to undo that, turn on my zebra stripes, and look at that. And so here we can see we have really good flow through the whole area. We have a little mismatch here, and we can fix that by doing some more match surface. So go to match surface, pick this edge and that edge, and all we want is tangency. We want to preserve the isocurve direction in order to have mi minimal changes. And we're going to match this guy to that guy. Save. And we're just going to do all four of them in this case. Last one. So now, th this may have pulled up the edges in the center, but we're going to check that with the zebra stripes again. And there's probably a little bit of mismatching going on, so we can do one final one. Um, as one of the things that um, I've learned is that as, as you do multiple match surface commands, it just brings the edges closer and the changes in the surface become less and less. And so sometimes just doing the same operation multiple times can really help um, get the result that you want. And so we're going to turn on the zebra guys again for one second. And you'll see that we have pretty good flow. Now this isn't perfect, but this is pretty damn good. Um, the, you could even go in and with move UVN do some individual control point modeling to get this uh, even better. But this is a result that I am more than happy with. And I'm going to accept that. And so you can see that I have a very logical layout uh, in my build sequence. The first thing I did is build my primary surfaces. Those are the blue guys. Then I pulled the theoretical edges back, built in my blend surfaces, trimmed those back to leave me with this five-sided hole, and then I filled that with um, two sweeps, and I did match surfaces. So this is one way of Filling a five-sided hole, there's uh, there's other ways. So as I come across more use cases, I'll probably do a few more examples of these. These, <laughs> for the longest time, have been the, the bane of my existence. And and even today, like sometimes I struggle with, with getting good results. And so, you know, showing different use cases can really help in, uh, in getting good results. So I hope this helps and um, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.